Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, Mike on the forums asked me to do a little video a little bit more on my cockpit project right now. So I thought I would go ahead and make one and post it and give you guys a little bit more, more of a walk around to where I'm at right now. So I'm down in my basement. This is one area of my basement where the sim sits. You can see the, the shell, FDS shell sitting there. Uh, it's got five 60 inch monitors wrapped around it. Only three of them are operational right now. I'm running off that one computer right there. Uh, there's two towers there. The one on the left is running. The other one's turned off at the moment. So really one computer running uh, Immersive Desktop Pro Multi-View in X-Plane gives me three front views at the right angles just like we get inside of uh, FSX or prepared for similar to like our projector setup so only I'm running on monitors. Here's my power supply rack. Uh, got uh, two 18 volt power or 28 volt power supplies there on the left. Uh, and then you've got two 12 volts and two 12, two 12 volt, two 5 volt power supplies here in the rack here. Uh, circuit breaker panels, real aircraft circuit breakers. I'll turn on the light over here. Um, stereo for the sound system. That that power supply down there, it's not on right now, but this one will, I'll turn it on. This will be supplying uh, 26 volt AC 400 hertz power for the gauges. Um, I've got safeties to turn off those circuits that these are all plugged into, key locked. Uh, there's a dedicated big ground bar there. Everything's grounded. If you look at the back of the rack here, still working on some of the hookup here to the circuit breakers. Um, See there, I'm not going through circuit breakers right now, but I'm working on that, stringing them up. Uh, that's going to turn into a pretty big wiring mess there by the time I'm done. Uh, but purple is 28 volt DC, red is 5 volt DC, yellow 12 volt DC, green is brown, earth brown. Uh, there'll be brown in there for the 26 volt AC, 400 hertz power. And uh, Really, I'm just trying to make sure everything is, you know, as protected as I can be. This is the back, or the front side of the sim over here right now. You can see there's enough room. It's about three feet of space for me to work. I just put it in this, this electronic shelf. Um, and I'm going to move the camera over the top. You'll see the nose of the FDS shell. I've cut it open. Show right on here, but see how I've got these cutouts in there. Um, that'll allow me to get the things as I'm wiring the real panel. Um, <clears throat> this monitor that's in the front can be kind of moved back against the wall and pushed all the way back in that corner, exposing the whole nose, um, and then I can work on things. The electronic shelf is really meant to keep all the wiring. It's going to go inside here, and you can see the back of the MIP. A lot of this stuff is not wired right now. Uh, that's part of the project. Um, everyone's seen a lot of Rob Archer's uh, 737-300 uh, and all the wire that is going to be involved here. So I'm trying to make looms work out the power buses. You see I have 26 volt power bus there, 28 volt DC bus. Um, those are lighting dimmers that take 28 volt DC down to the 5 volt DC and then potentiometer it, but a pot operated uh, dimming control for the backlighting. And uh, they can support uh, up to 3.7 amps input. Output is uh, 0 to 15 amps at 5 volt DC. So I can run all my. Uh, backlighting pretty nicely and then you can see around the back over here you know it's just back wall the monitors so a lot of work to be done in the nose 
this power supply down here right now is just temporary. I'm just using it right now, running a, a 12 volt DC to uh, a couple wires there that are running the, the glare shield uh, under lighting. I haven't hooked them up to the regular power yet and the dimmer switches for it yet, but right now, just so you get a feel, you can see the FDS rudder pedals in there. These are just monstrous industrial strength rudder pedals, highly recommended. They're awesome, they're dual linked. Uh, they cost me a pretty penny a year or so ago, but they are well worth it. So now I'll come around into the cockpit. So on this side, again, I've got about three feet of space between the wall there. The uh, back wall of my cockpit supports, um, and here you can kind of see the screen views there. Like I said, only the front three are, are running right now. Trying to give you a view from the air. Um, side windows are blacked out right now. I could run five PCs network and get all five back up and running. Still don't like the way the clouds transition across network PCs. In a multi-view setup, the clouds transition fine. Obviously there's a performance hit though. So still experimenting with that with X-Plane. Ultimate goal will be able to run either X-Plane or Prepared. I may be using the Milvez 737-200 versus the Fly J Sim 737-200 and X-Plane, but it's a work in progress. You can see the ladder rack there takes the power. You can see my power bundles, 12 gauge wire. Uh, again, red, purple, brown yellow, green for ground. Those are coming up for a piece of PVC pipe and routing over into the overhead over here. And then when you get in the overhead, you'll see I've got different buses. The wires come in through through this, uh, this panel. There's the dimmer for the overhead. It takes 28 volt DC right there off of bus C1 through the dimmer runs it out into this 5 volt DC backlighting bus which then feeds the overhead panel. Um, you saw some pictures in the bus runs. There's the other buses, 28 volt DC bus from the quarries. 5 volt DC bus is for um, running all the uh, USB TTL hubs that are up in here and all those USB cables will run down into the overhead uh, to the Tinsies that will run each module. So now we're in the cockpit. Um, and I'm going to do some, some panning around in here. Basement back there, my workbenches. I have a little uh, 12 volt. Uh, uh, computer type fans. They're uh, six inch, I think six inch or eight inch fans in the back wall that suck air from inside the sim and exhaust it out the back. They work pretty nice. <coughs> FDS shell liners, uh, real uh, web receipts. Um, these are uh, J rails that were custom made by Mike Sherrick. Thank you, Mike. Uh, they work wonderful. Allow the J rate or allow the Weber seats to be adjusted. There's the FDS pedals again. Real columns, real yokes, real crossover tube underneath. You've seen all that in videos. Um, let's see, pedestal 737 200 pedestal. Uh, working on it right now. I'm hooking up, there's some big dimmers in here. I gotta run some 26 volt AC through there just to power up the, um, the, the one light up here in the overhead. Uh, so I'm working on that too. But the pedestal right now, the radios, I think is what I'm gonna use when I get them hooked up. Um, it's an extra huge fastener. Uh, but there's my audio panels, radios, beautiful. 
fire panel, transponder. Throttle quadrant, I think, is from a dash 300 or 500. Um, we don't have the auto throttles hooked up anymore to motors because the 200 doesn't need it. Um, let me see what else on the pedestal. Spot it for the pedestal. Throttle quadrant's already hooked up through a Tinsy. All the uh, throttle quadrant wiring goes down through the floor underneath through the pedestal and goes into the back here. So that Tinsy right there with one of Rob's breakout boards is running the uh, throttle quadrant functions along with the Bodner card. All this mess you see up here is nothing more than a couple DB25 connectors, one off of each column that, control, that has uh, wiring uh, breakout boards uh, for the wiring and the uh, yokes. So your autopilot disconnect, your trim switches, mic switches all come through those two sides right there. Uh, and into the Bodner card or into the Tinsy depending on what I'm doing. There's a motor controller right there that'll get hooked to the Tinsy that'll operate the trim wheels which are not hooked up yet. And there's some more of my, my bus power coming in from the rack and uh, a little TTL hub for running stuff in here. So that's, that, that handles pretty much the throttle quadrant and will handle the radios too. Uh, radios will be USB connected uh, or to the USB hubs underneath. Fire panel will probably get its own Kinsey card. We're moving to the overhead. Just got this put in. So a lot of work there. You saw the pictures wiring that up. Um, the overhead is, we're gonna get into this bright light back here. I apologize, I've got a fluorescent light on the back wall. Aft overhead panel, it's um, not hooked up yet, but I'm trying to make it as authentic as possible. And then uh, forward overhead, I've got you know, more of the Dash 200 style panels, air conditioning panel, um, there's your uh, pressurization panel, is the old, older style panel. We've got new belts on order to replace the belts in there that run all these because they're dry rotted. Working on that. Um, you see what, what we call the T which is the center panel, which is lit up right now, and the lower light panel, it's like an upside down T. Uh, now I had a, I have a NG panel that FDS provided me that I could put in here if I was running an NG. Right now I'm running a, I've been kind of going back and forth, so right now I'm running the 200, uh, dash 200 type lower panel real start switches they work they're all hooked up everything works uh, the dimming right now going through that dimmer I showed you in the back wall um, that's working the uh, you know the dimming just fine so you can see the panel working and again just trying to give you guys some nice close-up detail Slightly different panels in here in the 200. You can see next to the APU, you got your AC amps, and then you only got one wiper switch. NG would have two wiper switches there. Slightly different looking uh, fuel panel, different than an NG. Still missing one panel up in here. Um, I'm looking for it still for right there. Nav selector panel. But for the most part, these are all the types of panels you'd see in the um, 200. Let's go to the main instrument panel. Uh, right
right now. I've got a this kind of radar display in the center uh, CDU panel. I might switch it out for the one that's more like the Fly J Sim 200 one that's depicted in there. It's got less knobs on it. Um, this is kind of cool because I took everything out of it in, in anticipation of putting a screen inside of it. But it's got the real carriage in here. So you, you lift that up. There's a there's a latch mechanism underneath here that uh, you basically you pull out on, and this whole thing lifts out. You can see the mechanism under there. So put that back in place. I kind of like that, so I might leave this one in place. Throttle quadrants work. Flaps work. Spoilers work. Trim wheels are not working yet. Trim indicators are not hooked up yet. Parking brake works. Real 28 volt bulb in there. Uh, fuel cutoff levers work. If I flip them right now, I'll kill the engines. Nothing on the MIP is running yet except for this clock. It's a wind up clock. And uh, it works fine. That's the right time. It's about 10 15. Well, 10, yeah, about 10 15. Um, I have another one on the other side. It's not fully functioning. Something keeps stopping on me. Uh, this is the uh, SIVA. Um, INS system. Uh, Rob's got, got one working. Uh, I got to replace some of the bulbs. Each of these digits has got tons of bulbs behind them. Uh, I've got another unit that Mike Sherrick gave me kind of torn apart. Between the two I should get a good working unit here. But this will be a, a way to, I think you can drive like 10 waypoints through it and still have some kind of a, you know, way of navigating besides just VOR. Um, here's your your altitude. Um, it's got the off flag in it because I don't have it powered yet, but it does work fine. Altitude select. Come over here. I have a standby altimeter over here. You can see the, the marrow turning down there. Um, I'm going to try to get that one working. Uh, I don't know if it's interfaceable or not yet. Um, there's the five inch airspeed gauge. Or I should say, if, I think it's, yeah, five inch, no, four inch, rather, five inch uh, ADI. Uh, we know the ADIs in here work fine because we actually took them, swapped the cannon plugs and rabs, and tested them while we were at his house, and they, they work fine. Uh, so I just need to get them all hooked up in my sound. Uh, there's the uh, HSI uh, your RMI over here real those will be working um, and your ear speed indicator pull it out move your bugs Yeah, you have to put in your own speeds here, so, you know, you've got to watch the needle and adjust your speed bugs manually here. Instrument comparator, that'll be working. Autopilot um, reset indicator, there's your uh, uh, AFDS displays there, those will all be working. Green and amber lighting. Marker beacon lights. I love the old school style lights where you've got, you know, you, you twist, you can see when you twist these, you can open and close the shutter and get, you know, different intensity on the lights. Just really cool. Uh, there's your uh, uh, radio altimeter. You can set your uh, minimum there. Vertical speed indicator. Again, there's the clock. It's a second DME there. 
This particular HSI has a ground speed indicator and a miles uh, DME 1 indicator. One Rob has has a DME 1 and DME 2, not a ground speed. Uh, so we'll have to see if we can get that working. I put this other DME uh, here to run DME 2 so I can see both from the pilot side. Fuel quantity gauges, uh, the, the lower ones are close enough for the uh, Fly J Sim. The upper one is a temporary. Rob's got my actual one that's got more fuel quantity in it, but I just threw this one in. Rob's using it because we need it for world flight right now. Um, just different old school stuff, you know. Just get your, uh, speed settings. And the standby uh, horizon indicator, who knows if we'll be able to get that thing working. Uh, it looks cool. You uncage it and you'll see it flip around there. Ooh, there it goes. Uncaged. I'll put that pin in later. Put it here on my radar panel so I don't forget it. Uh, there's the EPR gauges. Those work. You just, you know, you set your EPRs. N1, N2, exhaust temp gauges. These will all be hooked up. Fuel flow gauges, similar to the ones Rob's got. Um, here we've got your oil quantity gauges, temp gauges, pressure gauges. This particular panel is kind of cool because it has the, um, if you notice right up in here in the center, uh, these two quarries right here are gravel protector quarries. So whatever plane this particular panel came out of had the gravel protection uh, installed, package installed. Flaps indicator is not correct, it's like a 727 flaps indicator, but uh, the, the actual one is so expensive on eBay that we're just going to use these, it makes it work. Yaw damper is real. Uh, landing gear, landing gear is a... Uh, not hooked up yet, but about to be. We've got a Tinsy on the bench right now uh, to hook up that one. There's a TAT uh, settings. And again, similar gauges. Got the RMI, standby altimeter over here. There's your hydraulic gauges. And then uh, another comparator, radar altimeter. Another clock, wind up clock, eight day clock over there. And then you got the real WeMac vents. These are proper lower panels. So, again, it's just, you know, kind of panning out here. You can see right now I've got LED lighting underneath. inside of the uh, housings that used to have fluorescent lighting. It looks pretty nice, I think, the lighting. Moving up to the glare shield. Beautiful, a real glare shield. It's sturdy, I've got it all mounted in there really good. Uh, you got your real fire warning and master caution, quarries, um, real six packs right here. Um, these would not be in the 200. Uh, this panel is probably from a 300, uh, I believe. Um, and when it had a different, you know, different, you know, the more, a little bit more modern MCP in here. But, you know, it works great for this. Um, who knows, maybe I'll have an FMC someday in here or something. And, you know, um, nice to have some different selections there. I'll keep it. It'll look nice. There's the uh, uh, flight director. Beautiful. Maybe chunky. Chunky real stuff here. I mean, it's just really heavy duty. And then uh, you've got your autopilot over here. Outside, we're sitting in. Oh, where the hell are we? I think we are in Salt Lake City. If I'm not mistaken. Got the uh, SkyMax uh, cloud textures. They look really nice in X-Plane. I think they look fantastic. I'm 
really happy now that I've got three screens running on multi-view because the, the clouds do sync across the screens. That was always my biggest gripe. And, you know, frame rates take a hit. This is a 1080 GTX card in here. Um, it's doing all it can to keep up with the rendering options I have set right now. You got some of the data showing up there in the corner. Um, but yeah, this is it. So I am still working earnestly on, you know, trying not to give up on this project. I just, there's so much eye candy in here and there's so much to touch and feel and so much history in every gauge and every part of this uh, cockpit deck that I really want to see it through to completion. It is a daunting amount of work ahead of me. Uh, Rob's help and others' help, and, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. I just keep forging forward and um, you know I did buy some of the stuff for an NG I, I've got some more C, I've got CDUs and a, a pedestal stuff from FDS now if I wanted to go that route but right now for the time being I'm going to keep forging ahead and uh, you know hopefully I'll make this thing realized and everything working eventually here I'm well on my way I know what I'm doing with the uh, a lot of the programming uh, and with Rob's help I think we can get it done probably just going to take the next six months to a year to get everything hooked up and running but it's exciting so again that's the uh that's the setup i hope you enjoyed this kind of walkthrough video um i think it's going to look really nice have a good night